12 career NASCAR Truck Series starts. Now behind the wheel of the Super Late Model, takes the green flag. So our first qualifier is officially on the clock. Wes Burton set to make his first Governor's Cup start here this afternoon. They have been thrashing on this machine to get him ready to go. Wes Burton gonna put the first time up on the scoreboard. First time by 18-3-3-0, setting the bar high. 18-3, it's not a bad time. Typically, Steve, we see drivers pick up on lap two, but with the weather today being a little more overcast than expected, and a lot of rubber on the racetrack, things tightening up, and it is an 18-2-5-8, so a slight pickup there for Wes Burton as he's top of the board here early on. Looks like next out to qualify will be car number 78 for the veteran racer, John Kaufman, who is going to be making his third career Governor's Cup Series start, and he is 11th in the Sunbelt Series point standings. This is a Florida Sunbelt Series race. It's the finale, as a matter of fact. So John Kaufman of the Team Marines Kaufman Tech Strutmasters ride is our second qualifier here this afternoon. Making the drive over from Live Oak, Florida, taking his first qualifying lap, taking the wing flag now. John's made a handful of starts in the Florida Sunbelt Series this year. He's also taken Michael Goddard under the reins of the Team Marines team here and given him a heck of a a hot shoe, a heck of a good hot rod, I should say. No, it's good to see with Goddard with the car being broke right now. For them to step up and give him a ride. Kaufman second on the board right now with a 19.059. Kaufman will look to pick up here on lap number two. We've seen a lot of improvement out of this team over the last year or so. And a lot of uh, improvement for John Kaufman as well. As he picks up nicely on lap number two, an 18.825. 18.825 for John Kaufman. Our third qualifier, the Donnie Wilson Racing Stables, the JBL-sponsored car for Jesse Love out of Menlo Park, California. Of course, Jesse, the reigning ARCA National Series champion with 10 wins in ARCA competition this year. He really dominated over there, and he's got himself an Xfinity Series ride for next season. So Jesse Love will be our third qualifier under the green here. And Steve, he's taking over for your favorite driver from last year. Yep, definitely going to be interesting to see what he does over there. Jesse Love come by the start finish line, take the white flag. 17-9-1-2. Goes top of That's the board. That's a lap there. Yeah, this Donnie Wilson Motorsports team, they've been one of the top teams in Super Late Model Racing throughout the country. Of course, Donnie Wilson, no slouch behind the wheel himself, but has built a heck of a team here. And they should contend a 17-9-4-6 for Jesse Love. And Jesse Love, top of the board here after three. Our next qualifier will be our leading rookie in the Florida Sun Belt Series. This is Trenton Hennick in car number 17. He's sixth in points coming into the evening. He's made all the races, all six of them, this season, starting back during the World Series in February. So, again, a rookie season for he and this team. And they popped in here this morning. They Their first laps on the racetrack for this morning. Taking the green flag on his first qualifying lap, making his way about halfway up the track in turn one and two. So we'll see what Trenton Hennick can do here in this light blue number 17. Again, we did have two late entries this morning to add to our field, so always good to continue to add cars. And a first lap for Trent Hennick will be a 19.779. 19.779 for the 17. He's fourth on the board. Making his way into turn three. And out of four, see what his final qualifying lap will be. Checkers are out a 19.562. So good to see him pick up on lap number two. We were just kind of talking about this gentleman a moment ago. Car number 58 for Michael Goddard will be our next qualifier. Michael out of the Fort Myers area. He is actually second in the point standings for the Florida Sun Belt Series. I uh, had a big opportunity two weeks ago to maybe put some pressure on Brad May for the title, but got swept up in a big wreck over there in three and four. So now the Team Marines Kaufman Tack number 58 machine for Michael Goddard under the green flag. Picked up his first new Smyrna Speedway win earlier this year in his own number 37. And now behind the wheel of this 58 car. Different car than they raced here a week ago, but they have worked hard to get it up to speed. Let's see what they have for a time. A 17-9 at 6-9, second on the board on lap one for Michael Goddard. Show a lot of speed in number 58. 
Time to beat Jesse Love, 17-9-1-2. Michael Goddard not far off from that. Let's see what they can do here. Checkers out, 17-9-6-2. Two very consistent laps will put Michael Goddard second on the board. Our next qualifier will be car number 80 for Brian Finney. Brian Finney and the Finney Enterprises, Bob Steele, Bob Steele Chevrolet sponsored car to Merritt Island. Brian Finney, one of the most veteran drivers in the Sunbelt Series. He's got 78 Sunbelt Series starts. Now this series brought back to life last year after a several year hiatus. And that brought Brian Finney back to the hot wheel of the Superlay model. And he is third in the point standings coming into today. Best career Governor's Cup finish for Brian, a sixth back in 2003. Of course, he's made a bunch of ARCA starts as well. White flag in the air for Brian Finney. And an 18.133, that'll put Finney third on the board. So Finney now on a lap number two, looking to pick up a little bit here. Checkered flag ready to fly for Brian Finney. Oh, he might have tagged. Yeah, he did tag the wall a little bit coming off of four. And 18.171 will keep Finney in third. Steve Driver's definitely pushing it here in qualifying. Next up is going to be the number 22, Giovanni Ruggiero out of Seekonk, Massachusetts. First auto group, Donnie Wilson Motorsports, number 22. He's a 2023 Winchester 400 winner. He's got one pro late model win here with the World Series. First governor start, Governor's Cup start for the young from the number 22. And Gio out of the Donnie Wilson Racing Stables. And you know, if you follow Super Late Model Racing, you know uh, there's some action. Last time he raced there with he, between he and Steven Nassi. Of course, both those drivers here today. A lot of folks talking about that. So we'll see if anything comes of it. White flag in the air, a 17.966. And right now the 22 in third. It's the third fastest early on for the first auto group sponsored machine. Making his way into turn three and four. Going to go right up against the wall on the exit of turn four. And top, top of the board. board. There you go, Steve. 17, 8, 9, 1. He bests his teammate, Jesse Love. So the Donnie Wilson Motorsports team sitting 1, 2 on the scoreboard with a lot of drivers left to go, including... One of our locals here, Mr. Daniel Webster on the speedway in the Webster race cars, right foot down, number 33 car. Daniel, a very successful season on the wheel of the Sportsman, one over at the Freedom Factory in the most recent SRL Sportsman Series race. Webster actually comes into today's Governor's Cup sitting fifth in the Sunbelt Series standings, despite having to miss a couple of those races with the Sportsman commitments. But uh, he's had some podium finishes and some good runs, and I know he's run well over at your neck of the woods in Auburndale, Steve. Certainly. She was lap number one, lap number one on the board. 18-093, currently fourth on the... Not a bad run there for Daniel Webster. One career Governor's Cup start. He was 32nd in 2011. He's going to best that here today. Qualifying lap. Going to stay P4 on the... Boy, right now with a 17.992. Not a bad effort there for that small team. And next up on the speedway will be the number 75 machine for Brighton Horner. Was actually racing here last night, the prelude in our modified division. I believe he got a top five finish in that race. First career Governor's Cup start for the Tampa Restaurant Equipment and Ice Machine Supply. Florida Coast Shrimp sponsored car. The green is out for Brighton Horner. He's got one start in the Florida Sunbelt Series this year, but looking for his first top 10. I feel like if this team can survive and make it to the end, they've got a very good uh, shot at a top 10 finish here today. Yeah, one of our young up and coming drivers and a former Dave Toucher racing a Super Late Model. That's not a bad first lap there, Steve. 18.051, that puts him fifth on the scoreboard. And we'll see if he can pick up a little bit here on this second lap. Most drivers are picking up on lap number two. We'll see if that reigns true here for the 75 of Brighton Horner. Well, just so a little, much for that. Yeah, just a little bobble off for turn four there. Probably gave up just a little bit once he got some heat in those Hoosier tires. Now, how about this guy? Car number 24 coming off a career best season on the NASCAR Cup Series. Third in the points with six wins this year. This, of course, is Charlotte, North Carolina's William Byron in the William Byron store, Anthony Campy Racing U.S. Radiator Machine. 
William Byron, no stranger to this racetrack. A couple of World Series wins, including the last two Clyde Hart Memorials. And the green is out for one of our perennial contenders here today, William Byron in car number 24, driving for Anthony Campy Racing, a team that has so much history and so many wins. They might be chasing car 24 here today, much like they did on Sundays throughout the season. Here he comes to complete lap number one. Lap one up to P3, 17-916. See what we can do here on lap two. Third on the board, we kind of figured, looking through the entry list, Donnie Wilson Racing and Anthony Campy Racing would be Two of the top teams here this week. And they have swept the top three positions early in qualifying. William Byron to the line. Top of the board for William Byron is 17.859. Crowd seemed to like that one. I think uh, probably a fan favorite here today, Steve William Byron. A lot of people cheering for him. And he's top of the board right now, but we still have a lot of cars left to go, including this young man. They call him Crash. This is Johnny Aramendia out of New Brunsville, Texas, in the first call plumbing and heating machine making his first new Smyrna Speedway super late model start in the Governor's Cup here today, but ran all of the World Series for Ben Kennedy Racing, this, this same team here during uh, February's World Series. Finished 16th in pro late model points, so has experience here. Let's see what Crash can do as the green comes out. Time to beat, of course, William Myron, 17.859, a very, very fast speed. And we'll see if Johnny's up to speed here. Sharp looking car, throwback to the way his dad's car looked in the old uh, Bush series ride back in the early 2000s. An 18.437, and that's gonna put the 58A for Johnny Aramendia in the ninth position. Coming on for lap number two, making his way through turn three and four. Right up against the wall, through the checker flag. 18.313 there for Johnny. That's going to keep him in the ninth position. As another one of the favorites, perhaps, to win his first Governor's Cup today. Driving the Nassi sponsor number 51. Of course, this is Pinellas Park, Florida's Stephen Nassi. And he's put the Heart to Heart Breast Cancer Foundation on the hood of that machine. I remember uh, a couple of years ago, Nassi winning the Heart to Heart 100 and donating his winnings to our local track charity here. And adding to the classy side of his name, green flag is out for Stephen Nassi. Does have a career best finish of second in this event back in 2021. And he's teamed up with Anthony Campy Racing, but has one of his typical Florida pieces out tonight in the white number 51. And yeah, the white flag coming out for him. Let's see where he clocks in. Fast lap number one, P4, 17.954. It's hard to believe Nasty doesn't already have a Governor's Cup win here. But as you alluded to, Ryan, a runner up here previously, chasing and his first. Governor's Cup. Steven Nassi coming down to the checkers. 17-9-1-1. That'll move him up to third, so a very competitive time. Nassi's won just about everything else here, including a World Series championship. Everything but the Governor's Cup. Maybe that changes today as our next qualifier hits the speedway. Next up is going to be George Gorham in the number 10 machine. Gorham showed a lot of speed in practice earlier in the week, Friday and Saturday. Gorham in the Blackburn Southern Barbecue and Hubbard Family Trucking. He is the 2022 Albert L. Speedway Super Late Model Champion. He's got two Sunbelt Series starts in 2023, and this will be his ninth Governor's Cup start. According to the records that we have here, third, his best career finish back in 2020, the last time he's run that event. George made his return to New Smyrna after a couple of years hiatus this year, and he's run well. A couple of podium finishes in the Sunbelt Series this year. First lap complete for Gorham. Top of the board for George Gorham. How about that? 17.855. Excellent effort for this team. Gorham unloaded fast right off the truck, and it's showing here in qualifying as well. And that was lap one. Let's see what he does on lap two. A little bit quicker. 17.841. Man, to unload and top William Byron anywhere is a special story and we'll keep our eye on car number 10. You know, maybe a little bit of an underdog coming into today, but I think he's a contender for sure. Anthony Sergi back with us here in car number 20, the MJS Concrete TSNC construction ride. Anthony out of Oviedo now working as an engineer in the Craftsman Truck Series on Friday and Saturdays. So green flag is out for Anthony Sergi, a veteran of the Governor's Cup. This will be his 11th Governor's Cup, Steve, and it looks like his best career finish, a fourth back in 2018. Sergi is a two-time Bill Baker Memorial winner. He's got two Spoil Series wins 
And as you alluded to, this is 11 Governor's Cup start. Still chasing that elusive trophy. An eight, just about an 18 flat there on lap number one. That's good enough for the eighth position. Again, there are two number 20s in the field. Sergi's is eighth right now as he looks to pick up on lap two. And he does, 17.904. Good effort for Anthony Sergi. He goes fourth on the board today. Our next qualifier, one of our 22 machines. We have three of them in the field here now. This is Gainesville, Georgia's Ryan Herbert in the Herbert Racing Machine. He's got three Southern Super Series starts, a couple of top tens in Speed Fest, and making his first Governor's Cup Series start. They showed some good speed in the morning practice today. A little bit loose, kicking it sideways, coming to the green. Again, if you are just getting here about halfway through, a super late model qualifying for this year's Florida Governor's Cup. Ryan Herbert on track now. The first lap on the speedway is a dead lap, doesn't count for time, and then they get two timed laps. Everybody chasing George Gorham and Carmel Bretan, a fantastic effort for that team so far. First lap complete for Herbert, an 18.159. These guys in the top five in morning practice. Last time I looked, anyways. Making his way down the back stretch, gonna set sail off into turn three and four. Most likely right up against the wall in the exit of turn four. Kicked it out just a little bit. See if he can pick up. B10 on the board, 18.068. Everybody's still chasing George Gorham with a heat overlap of 17.841. Another driver many of you will be surprised to learn has never won the Florida Governor's Cup. Of course, this is our defending Super Late Model Track Champion, the RK Edwards Incorporated, number nine out of the Bobby Sears Racing Stables for Brad May. Won the Pro Late Model Championship here last night. Looking for that first Governor's Cup win. Green is out for Brad May, the track veteran, multi-time winner and champion, best career Governor's Cup finish, uh, fourth a couple of times, 2016 and 2019. So Brad May on the clock, looking for that first Governor's Cup victory here today. Struggle last week in the Super Late Model race and goes 17.961 on lap number one. That's good enough for seventh on lap one there, Steve. Making his way down the back stretch on lap number two. See if he can pick up just a little bit here. Crack the top five possibly. May right down and up against the wall now. And Brad May actually slows up on lap number two in 18.016. That'll keep Connor Benign in the seventh position for now. Again, as is tradition with the Florida Governor's Cup, there's no invert in this race with 200 laps to make your way through the field. You don't need an invert to make for a good race. Our next qualifier, another one of our newcomers to the Florida Governor's Cup. This is the eight machine for Fort Collins, Colorado's Jonathan Knee, driving for Fathead Racing, flow coating on the side of this machine. Jonathan's made a couple of pro late model starts in 2023. He made his super late model debut a couple of months ago, driving for a different team, but now he's teamed up with Jamie Elton's Fathead Racing, and this team, no stranger to the Speedway. They've been here throughout the years, and now Jonathan Nee, perhaps with his best opportunity here at the New Smyrna Speedway. Taking the green flag for his first time lap, going off into turn one, and now making his way down the back stretch. Still very impressed with George Gorham's lap. William Byron sitting the top of the board. He thought that was going to be hard to beat. Maybe we'll see another upset here with Jonathan Nee. An 18-0-4-3, so not a bad lap there for Jonathan. Tenth on the board after lap one. Nee making his way into turn three and fours for his second time lap. Checkered flag in the air. Good pickup there for Jonathan Nee. Going to put the 8K machine into the ninth position. And here comes the team car to George Gorham. This is the 10F Francisco's Collision Center ride for Lakeland, Florida's Ross Francisco. Ross making his first Governor's Cup Series start. Actually, his, I believe, first Super Late Model start here at New Smyrna as well. Francisco's had some success on the uh, shorter bowling tracks, but this is a far cry from the bowling Ryan. Yeah, this is like the Super Speedway short tracks, if you, if you ask me anyway. That's how I like to build this place. And uh, good to see Ross out here. Hey, man, you've got some good help when George Gorham is helping wrench on your cars. Obviously, George has the speed. We'll see what Ross can do in a very similar piece. Ross Francisco making his way to the white flag. And his lap going to be at 18.769. 
So not quite where the other machine was at 16th fastest, but again, Ross still learning the ropes here at New Smyrna Speedway. George has a plethora of laps around this place. Ross still learning and gonna use 200 laps to get some experience here today. And who knows, maybe look into a, a good run on the left. And a little slow down there on lap two, 18.813. 18 cars that qualified so far. Next car up will be the number 54. 54 machine for Connor Sutton. This team, I don't believe they practiced here this morning, so I wasn't sure if they were going to make the call or not, but here they are. Connor out of Pensacola, Florida, in the Sutton Racing Finney Racing Enterprises car. Finished second in the Outlaw Point standings over at Five Flags in 2022 and 23, and again making his first Governor's Cup Series start. It's always good to see some, uh, some newcomers to the Super Late Model ranks here at New Smyrna. You know, a lot of big events held here with the Governor's Cup, the Sun Belt Series throughout the year, and of course the World Series in February, which we're all very excited and already thinking ahead to that great event. Nine straight nights of racing. Connor Sutton, maybe we'll see him in February. He's going to clock in a respectable first lap, 18.104 for the newcomer. Nice looking black car with white numbers. Plenty of opportunity for sponsorship on that vehicle as well. Coming on here for his final qualifying lap. I bet if you cut a deal with him, he'll take some uh, tire money for sure. Checkers out and a great pickup, 17.978 for the 54. Connor Sutton under the radar here this week, but 10th fastest with about five cars left to set time. Next out to qualify is the 27 machine. One of our local drivers here, this is Bobby Good out of Lake Mary, Florida. The Briar Team Total Site Development on the sponsored ride. 2015 Pete Orr Memorial winner. I was actually here for that. One of the first New Smyrna events I attended as a fan. I got to see Bobby Good get that victory. And Bobby's gonna take the green flag here. This will be his 11th Governor's Cup start. Finished fifth back here in 2021. Of course, that was the last running of this great event. Best finish for Bobby Good, a second back in 2014. Coming on for his first time qualifying lap. I'm sorry. Yes, first lap in the books. That'll be an 18.564, currently 17th on the board. Yeah, Bobby's not going to be happy with that. Got a couple of Sun Belt Series career wins. Picked that up last year, as a matter of fact. Checkers out, looking for a pickup. He picked up nicely, three tenths there, 18.212. 15th for Bobby Good, that's going to be disappointing. Next up is drive out of Sarasota, Florida, the number 30 of Jesse Dutilli. Integrity Transmission, number 30. Carbone Motorsports. He is a two-time Bill Bigley Memorial winner, 2016 and 19. He, this is his fifth start for the Governor's Cup. He's got a 2019 full throttle 100 winner as well. Best career finish for Jesse Dutilli was fourth back in 2020. Led a lot of that race, made a late race pit stop and was not able to get back out in front. Bubba Pollard went to victory lane that day. So Jesse looking to ride that momentum. He's had some good runs here as of late. A 17.850, second fastest for Jesse Dutilly. Boy, he's not been racing a lot, Steve, but he has not forgotten how to get around this place. Yeah, when you, when you, you know, you watch George Gorman, you watch Jesse Dutilly, these guys are just real smooth with the wheels. And that's what it takes to get around this fast track like this. And he'll remain second there, a 17.864, but that's a really good effort for that team. Jesse Dutilly second behind George Gorham. Both those local Florida drivers ahead of William Byron right now. Here's a driver I think a lot of people are sleeping on this week. Out of Naples, Florida, this is Michael Atwell, our most recent David Rogers Super Late Model winner. He won the Heart to Heart 100 here two weeks ago. He's driving the Universal Transmission Drake Ready Mix sponsored car. Two-time defending Bigley Memorial winner. He'll look to win that for the third straight year here in a couple of weeks at the Freedom Factory. Fifth Governor's Cup start for this driver. Sixth is best finish back in 2017. You can keep reading the stats. He's got plenty of them. This driver has really turned into one of the top contenders at any track he shows up to. White flying in the air for Michael Atwell, and he is fourth on the board, 17-8-7-8. Got to keep our eye on him here on lap number two. When it comes down to big races, Atwell's always there. He's got a couple $10,000 to win races over at Showtime Speedway as well. So. Yeah, that will, like I said, see if he can get it done anywhere. Maybe tonight will be his night as well. Top of the board for Michael Atwell, 17.838. Man, they just continue to impress out here. What a great feel the cars we have. 
And we're down to our last couple qualifiers here, Steve. Nice looking car out there, number 73, Bobby Gordoni out of Merritt Island. Yeah, Bobby Gordon here in the 73, one of our local drivers. He's made most of the Sunbelt Series starts this season with the first top 10. This is the Cocoa Beach Auto Repair, Dick Cornwell Racing, Golf and Gator sponsored ride. He's 12th in points coming into the evening. We get his first Governor's Cup start. Kind of a rough outing for him a couple of weeks ago. He's caught up in one of the many dust-ups we had in the Heart to Heart 100. That race was very action-packed. White flag here for Bobby Gordon's number 73 and 18956. And that's going to put Bobby in the 22nd position. See if we can pick up a little bit here on lap number two, making his way into turn three. Checkered flag, ready to fly for the sharp number 73 for Bobby Gordon. And he picks up a little bit, 18.833. And Steve, we are to our final qualifier here this evening. Car number 22 for last year's Sunbelt Rookie of the Year, Nick White giving us 24 starters for today's race. And first time back in a while for this machine and a very late entry popped in here maybe a couple hours ago. So they are looking for a little bit of speed here, shaking the car down, something obviously a miss on the 22 machine. So he's gonna get his lap in here, but he'll likely be 24th. But hey, at least they are here. We appreciate the effort. Shaking it down a little bit, getting up to speed. So, Steve, we came into the, oh, boy. Hang on, Nick. How about that save, ladies and gentlemen? Drifting it through turn one and two there, holding on to it. How about that for some practice there? He knows exactly not what to do in the feature later on. Nick White struggling a little bit here, but he's lucky to not put that car in the fence. We've seen some cars go up into turn number one throughout practice this week. Oh, no, and there he goes into the wall and Nick White he about had that happen on the first lap and then it all comes unglued here on lap number two so not the way we wanted to end qualifying here today for sure safety officials gonna make their way over there and check on the number 22 machine tough break for Nick White again getting here this morning uh, team hasn't run much in 2023 after he, winning Rookie of the Year last year, and they'll have some work to do if they're gonna make the Governor's Cup grid, but 24 cars here. We did have Richard Elkins here yesterday. He was hoping to make the start, but he, just like Nick White, went for a spin just like that in practice yesterday. And we've had some mechanical problems on a couple of the other cars that were entered. So it looks like we're scheduled to start 24, at least 23, to take the grid here for this year's Florida Governor's Cup. And how about Michael Atwell? Got his first career New Smyrna spin, or New Smyrna win, I should say couple of weeks ago in the Heart to Heart 100. Of course, that was when Ryan Moore was disqualified for a weight infraction. So Michael Atwell would love to actually take the checkered flag on the racetrack as the victor today in the Governor's Cup. And yep. he's looking strong there on top of the board. Certainly, and then outside row number one will be George Gorham in the 10G. Jesse Dutilli is qualified third. William Byron fourth. Gio Rogerio fifth. Anthony Sergi sixth. Stephen Nancy seventh. Jesse Lovett. 8th, Brad May 9th, and Michael Goddard round out the top 10. 11th on back, Jonathan Nee in the 8K. 12th is Connor Sutton in the 54, Daniel Webster 13th, Brighton Horner 14th, Ryan Herbert 15th, Brian Finney 16th, Bobby Good 20, or 17th in the 27th, West Burden 13th, Johnny Amandi is 19th, Ross Francisco 20th. 21st on back, John Kaufman 21st, Bobby Gordon, 22nd, Trent Hennick, 23rd, and Nick White will round out the field in 24th. Go to patreon.com slash speedwayvideo now.